Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry. Fastest 90 minutes on Outdoor Radio Program. Two segments left, hard to believe, on today's show. And uh, it's breezed through on this first Saturday. and Opening day of the uh, technically black powder hunt in the state of Tennessee. But it's also the gun hunt in 11 counties in West Tennessee, and I'll be leaving right after the show to head to Hardeman County. I've got my 270 Ruger with my tamer on the end uh, that was put there by the great Wayne Umberger a long time ago, and I may ask this next guest a little bit about that and how it functions and things along that line. But uh, Dave Gabbert and Gene Smith, as usual, are co-hosts on First Saturday, and I know, Dave, uh, you kind of gave me and my wife on Wednesday a little chance to uh, go to school on how to use pistols and also help me sight in my rifle. So I, uh, I'm i going to leave this next segment and, and, and go to the restroom and come back and let you and Keith Warner talk. I mean, because <laughs> Keith, good morning to yes, you. Keith, yes, good morning. Good morning. I, I, I'm overwhelmed. Dave Gabbard has a walk-in uh, historical thing under his house where he reloads and does all these different kind of things and uh so i want to talk with keith on this day that most people better have their rifles their black powders ready to roll right keith i mean don't go in don't go in friday night last night and buy you a a new rifle and head out to the woods this morning i mean uh yep you're a little behind the curve if that's the case well let's let's talk about preparation now so by now, and, and Dave, you join in on this and talk about the sighting in process. Uh, Keith, I hit the target on the first shot. Now, I did miss it one time other because I looked up. But uh, uh, talk about the preparation time. Dave, you know that. Uh, and I didn't think about having that firearm uh, not only sighted in, but, Keith, it better be prepared mechanically, shouldn't it? Sure, sure. Uh, I run into a lot of that. Uh, we've got, uh, usually we've got a rack full of guns that uh, need that kind of attention, and sometimes it's with uh, pr- plenty of uh, prior preparation, but sometimes it's uh, some of them are last minute. We try to accommodate people as best we can, because I've uh, been known to work on my own guns the night before as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But uh, no, we try to, you know, you want to prepare to have that gun clean and clean and lubricated and checked out, and maybe any improvements or enhancements, trigger jobs, check yes. the scope mount, all that. And then obviously spend some time on the range, not just sighting it in, but yes, you want to make sure it's sighted in properly, but also give yourself a chance to familiarize yourself with the gun. And a lot of people just don't spend enough time with firearms, and so if something something when it can and will go wrong is in the field and they're not prepared to take care of it because they just don't really just out of unfamiliarity, not really with any malfunction, so to speak, or any mechanical issue, but just a, a lack of familiarity. And so there you can't say enough about that of spending time with that gun, you know, getting it checked out and but spending time on the range, shooting it and knowing where it shoots and make sure it shoots where it's supposed to and, and doing it time and time again consistently. And, and Dave, you're listening to that because uh, oh yeah, you know I I was out a firm believer that if you uh, was going to treat yourself and buy you a, like a new firearm for Christmas, buy it in July. <laughs> right, <laughs> I totally agree. Totally time agree. To, you know, like Keith was talking about it to you know tune it up and and, and learn learn it little quirks and. And uh, how it shoots, and uh, just become all you know familiar with it. And, and and one thing that I noticed that Dave, that maybe I'm slack on. Maybe some of you other people out there are slack on. Uh, yes, you get it ready for the season, but keep it ready throughout the season. I mean, uh, Dave gave me some tips, Keith, about uh, don't just clean it before you go, and not clean it until everything's over. Uh, take care of it while you're out there because we have a long deer season. And uh, we've, uh, we've had to resurrect many a firearm that got put up, you know, got caught in the rain or yeah, uh, or a duck gun that's going to get wet, got put in a wet case or, or just a, you know, a good foggy day or change in temperature. You know, brought it in from the cold into the hot house and left it in the case and it's got a good coat of rust on it and, and all the problems that ensue from there. So uh, we deal with that a lot. 
Also, you want to slide the gun in while it's cold, not shoot a bunch of rounds and adjust it after it gets hot. Wait till it's cold, because right. you're going to be cold in the woods with it. Most likely, except today. I mean, you yeah, know, I mean, uh, today, we're yeah. going to have 75 degrees on this Saturday, and, uh, you know, that's why, I, you know, the deer won't know. You know, I was telling my wife the other day, uh, we were coming back from Dave Gabbert's and his home uh, coming down 100, and I said, uh, let's start looking for deer. I said, uh, they don't know. They haven't changed their clock. You know, so, that's I mean, right. that's, right. uh, that's a lot of people say, hey, it's too early to look for deer. No, it's not. They don't have a clock. You know, it's it's sure. part of it's part of their deal. We're talking to Keith Warner, uh, Keith Warner gunsmithing right there at Poplar and Kirby. Uh, you can't miss it. It's six six five five Poplar Avenue. And uh, I don't know. You know, I shoot with a tamer. You know what that mm-hmm. is, right, Keith? OK. Oh, yes, sir. I'm from Wayne Humberger <laughs> and I've been friends for years. And he's uh, well, I've learned a lot from him. One of the older gunsmiths that I've been I count among my mentors and learned a lot from him. So, yes, sir, I'm very familiar with that. Is Wayne still here with us? I mean, oh, yeah. Wayne's a, well, I talked to Wayne uh, probably about a, a week or maybe two weeks ago. Well, uh, he just, he's not doing any gunsmithing anymore, but uh, he was up until about two weeks ago. I think he, we, were, we were talking about that, and he's kind of fully retired now, but he still shoots a lot. And, well, I've got one of those. You, you know what I've got on the end of my 270 then? Sure. Uh, I've got that tamer. A lot of folks don't understand what that is. Uh, talk we, about talk about that. Well, we use that. We use a similar process. We use a, a muzzle brake. The tamer is his is his name for a, a muzzle brake. Uh, it redirects the gas as the bullet leaves the barrel. There's a tremendous amount of gas from the burning powder. Yes. That uh, exits with it. Uh, that that's, that's what you feel when you feel the muzzle blast and the and the flame that comes out of the end of the barrel. Uh, when you fire the gun, well, that gas can be redirected and used to your advantage to reduce the recoil and That's the right. recoil. Yeah. So yeah. we use a muzzle brake to do that, and uh, it's fit on the end of the barrel. It's got a series of holes in it, uh, precision machined, yeah. in order to redirect that, gra- uh, that gas and, and soak up some of that recoil. We put a lot of them on every season. Just put one on today, as a matter of fact. Did you really? Well, I know that uh, uh, his is glued in. I mean, it's uh, uh-huh. it's part of that gun barrel. You know, right. it's, it's nothing you can take on and off or whatever it might be. And he's got my name engraved in there and everything. I will say one thing, and, and Dave, you can you can say this, that we were sighting in and, and just fooling around with my rifle, and uh, it's it's loud, Keith. Oh, yeah. It's All that sound's coming back, and I think that uh, Dave's wife hit her head on the ceiling when I shot my <laughs> rifle, not, not expecting that cannon to go off. Uh, uh, when I shot it, but it is loud and it does, it does, uh, but it helps me. I'm, I'm so familiar with that gun and it still shoots just as good as it did 20 years ago. Uh, when oh, I got, sure. when I got it from, from Wayne. So, uh, so talk about now, uh, we've talked a little bit about that. Dave, you've talked a little bit. Dave's a reloader and, uh, I, I'm shooting reloads for the first time this year, Keith. Uh, That's wonderful. is that good? Oh, it's a great thing. If you've got an experienced reloader, which I'm sure Dave is, you can fine-tune a load to your rifle. And uh, Yes. Uh, surprisingly, you would think uh, there's a lot of rifles out there that you, you would think that they wouldn't be as particular as they are. And most of them will shoot ac- across, the, across the spectrum of available factory cartridges. They'll shoot them well, but it is uh, amazing. It's always amazing to me how, how a rifle will like a particularly lo- particular load or yeah. bullet right. yeah. or hand load better than all the others and shoot it measurably better. How about that, Dave? Yeah, that, that's just, uh, <laughs> you know, that's why a lot of people reload, you know, to fine-tune, you know, to get, you know, everything out of, you know, a rifle or even, you know, uh, it's funny, but you can... You know, I, I reload a lot of shotgun ammo because I do a lot of competitive shooting. Yes. And even yeah. even the shotgun, you know, if you if you can uh, try the different loads because, uh, you know, my main trap gun, the reload I use, uh, it has a certain load that it shoots the best. Ah, uh, okay. Know, pattern-wise. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, he's really put me in it. He's, he's, he's reloaded my 270. He's also uh, got me a load for coyote, which I'm going to be hunting also, uh, Keith. And so uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really impressed at how to do this. And one thing, I want to talk, 
Keith, next month we'll get you back on again uh, before Christmas and things along that because uh, Dave knows that I'm interested in uh, taking that first next step, me and my wife, as far as self-defense with a pistol. Now, sure. I'm, I have I have no knowledge of using a pistol, really. Uh, that's never have. But I experienced it with Dave on Wednesday, and I'm more comfortable now. So I want to talk in November, if it's okay with you. Uh, we get you back on, Keith, in November to, to talk it. about, because uh, a lot of folks, I don't know if you can get firearms right now. I'm not sure. I saw some of the ones on your Facebook page that uh, that you've got for sale. But uh, sure. is is ammo and, uh, I mean, talk. Ammo, ammo and firearms in general uh, are just hard to get these days. We are able to get some and keep some in inventory. It's it's limited and it doesn't last long. It doesn't, so doesn't. No. You want or like, you better get it. Better uh, get it. That's what Dave Gabbard told me and everything. Well, let's talk next month, okay, Keith? We'll do it again. That'd be great. All right, That'd buddy. Appreciate you. Me. Always appreciate you having on with because I. You're still a pup to me, Keith, okay? <laughs> you, you'll always. Go kill a big deer. I'm going. Thanks, Keith. Talk to you. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Keith Warner, folks, and he's a Keith Warner gunsmithing. Uh, you can go to his website, Keith Warner, W-A-R-N-E-R, guns.com, 6655 Poplar Avenue. Uh, that's where I would go if I was anybody else. Uh, all right. That was good, Dave. Thank you. Jane. Yeah. Uh, Gene, what was that you just said before? We, you got another pun before we can close this out real quickly? Yeah, the little the little snake asked his mama. says, Mama, are we poisonous? She said, what do you ask? She said, I just bit my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. All right, let's take a break, come back, and we're going to go step back and talk to some co-hosts on Outdoors with Larry Wright. 